Hello and welcome back. We have seen how to build a model on a multi-class classification problem. Let us try to see how to do error analysis and uh, find out where the problem is and then we can fix it because we know different ways of fixing the problem, right? There's different ways of fixing how to make the model the best. What are the different ways? Hyperparameter tuning or playing with the threshold, right? So let us look at uh, the error analysis. We have taken the confusion matrix, precision score, recall score and F1 score, no methods. And we can make predictions on whole data set by taking the model dot predict and passing the X train. These are the predictions for, for around, you know, 80% of the data it's predictions. This is train set only, right? So using these predictions, you can actually calculate confusion matrix. So if you look at confusion matrix method, it takes a digit Y train and Y train predict. What is it doing? It is actually trying to see how many actual zeros, right? these are all zeros in the data set, are predicted as zeros, ones, twos, threes, fours, like that. So actuals are rows, predictions are columns in a confusion matrix. I hope you remember. If you don't remember, please go back to the previous session on uh, binary class classification and confusion matrix and try to get some idea. So, the actual zeros are the total of this row, right? 3154 plus 0 plus 5 plus 5 plus 5 plus 27 plus 28 plus. All these are our actual zeros present in our data set, the records belonging to zero. And the model predicted 3154 as zeros out of all these zeros, zero records present, present in the data set. Five records, it misclassified as one, sorry, two, this is one, right? And five records, it misclassified as three. Five records, it misclassified as four. 27 records, it misclassified as five, like that. And if you look at uh, this row, right? So zero, one, two, three, four, five. This record, this row belongs to fives, actual fives. Now all these 21 plus 12 plus 13 plus 83 plus 35 plus 200 and 2632 plus 38 plus 12 plus 134 plus 40. These are all number of records present in the data set which are belonging to 5. And out of them 21 records the model predicted as 0. The record belonging to 5 but model understood as the pattern as 0. And uh, 12 records it predicted as 1. The record belonging to 5, 13 records it predicted as 2. Out of all those records, 2632 records, the model predicted correctly as 5. So, we, you know, this is the confusion matrix. So, the rows are actuals, columns are predicted. So, to understand this uh, graphical representation in, in a graphical way, the actuals and the predicted, the intersection are the actuals and predictions is the true positives. If you see this, this is true positive zeros, truly positively predicted as zeros. The records belong to zero and the model predicted as zero. Truly predicted as ones, the records belonging to one and model predicted as one. The record belonging to two, the model predicted as two. All the diagonal values are going to be true positives in a confusion matrix. And uh, the false negatives. The model predicted, you know, the positive value, the, the, the record belongs to the particular class. In this particular case, if you take <coughs> 0, 1, 2, right, the record, the 12 records belong to 2, but the model predicted as 0, that is false negatives. And false positives, the records belonging to negative, but the model predicted as positive, right. So, if you look at... Uh, if you look at uh, this particular case, 13 records is false negative and 0 is false positive, right? The record belongs to 2, but 0 of them it predicted as 2. 0 of uh, the records belonging to 1 as 2, that is false positives. So you know why am I talking about these? Because if you look at the precision and recall score and F1 score, it is all dependent on true positives, false negatives and false positives, right? 
what is the formula for uh, uh, precision out of all positive predictions how many are correct true positive divided by true positive plus false positive is the precision and recall is in this direction out of all the existing positive records how many are predicted correctly true positives divided by false negatives plus true positives so that is this pp divided by the total of this row it is recall right so confusion matrix is very important and you know the precision recall scores are very important when the data set is imbalanced particularly this data set is not imbalanced because we have taken all classes data in the binary class setup we have converted the non files to you know one class and files to one class there it became a imbalanced data set but we have taken original data as it is and it has got equal number of records maybe you know every uh, class has got around 3000 or you know 4000 records in the data set so it is a balanced data set you can actually use accuracy score also but to understand the confusion matrix and precision recall scores i took it i took this way and we have got 92% precision and 92% recall and if i calculate fm score i'll get 90% fm score it's a harmonic mean right so i've got 90% fm score so sorry this is on test set on the train set we have got 92% fm score but on test set when i try to you know <coughs> predict values for test set i used standard scalar dot transform only because when i did fit transform on the standard scalar if you look at here when i did fit transform on the standard scalar it actually found means and standard deviations of each column and it kept it aside on 80% of the data if you take mean and standard deviation it is good right the assessment is going to be good here you should not be doing fit on the test set because it is only 20% of the data if you do fit and transform again it is going to find the mean and standard deviation again and that those are not going to be appropriate when data the sample size is big you take mean and standard deviation it's going to be appropriate so when you do transform it is going to use the mean and standard deviations found on the train set and make the transformation what is the transformation it is doing it is actually finding z scores of all the values in the test set we need to have data in similar scale for stochastic gradient descent to work properly so we applied the standard scaling and then passed that data to predict on test set and on test set i have got 90% accuracy the model is a bit overfitted when model is a bit overfitted you may have to apply regular edit i did not do it as an exercise you can take it and do it okay so i calculate f1 score no precision recall but when i look at uh, this uh, confusion matrix all these numbers right they look a little confusing if we can create a heat map it would be better right so i created a heat map here so sns is a c bar and heat map it took the confusion confusion matrix and uh, you know line width is the gap between each square right so it actually created a confusion matrix all the diagonal values are getting thick blue because you know the values are bigger numbers are this is actually true positives right they are going to be high in every model right so they are blue but when you look at the other area they are around uh, 0 to 500 right and if you look at closely this is thick this is you know this line is thick this this is thick that means some threes are being predicted as fives you know when the area is thick right that means uh, there is something wrong happening and we may have to focus on those two classes and make the model you know work well on those two classes then the overall accuracy will improve so here uh, when you look at these blue like blue dots right they are kind of you know here and there right uh, some are very, uh, like a little light and some are a little thick to make all these blue dots uh, little more evident and clear we can do normalization what is normalization divide by maximum is one of the kind of normalization right so i took uh, the sum of all the rows right this row sum of all the rows means what the sum of all this row is what all the records belonging to zero sum of all these rows is, is what all the records belonging to one 
all the record is belonging to two. I have taken the sum and dividing the dividing each number here. What will happen if I take the sum and divide each number? The data will come between zero and one. That way, the diagram, the heat map is going to you know be more evident or more clear. So if you, you know, I have taken the sum and axis one and keep them true. I said when I say axis one, it is going to sum like that, right? All the columns it's going to sum and keep them true means it will keep the dimensionality as two dimensions only. If you see this, it is one dimensional, one dimensional, one dimensional, and on top of it a two dimensional, right? So it is going to be easier for division, right? You take a matrix, a two dimensional matrix. And divide it with another two-dimensional matrix. You get uh, the normalized values, and then try to do a heat map. See the colors; they actually came close, and uh, the the pattern is also a bit more evident. See this here? Some threes are, you know, compared to other areas. This is a little thicker. That means threes are being misclassified more, or fives are being misclassified as eights more, and uh, sixes, sevens are being misclassified as nine more. Right, some people may write seven like that and nine maybe a little like that. Right, so you know there is a reason because of the pixels and the pattern they are misclassified more. So you can understand on a multi-class classification setup where exactly the error is happening, and if you know where exactly the error is happening, you can fix the problem well. So I hope you got it how to build a model and how to do error analysis and you know make the model the best and. Once the model is working good on train set, you can use it on test set and see how is how is it working. If it is working good on test set also, you can move it to production. So this whole process, you know it, right? The end-to-end -end data science or AI project execution process will not change. The algorithms changed, the accuracy and error matrix changed. That's it. In the next session, we will understand what is one versus all and what is one versus one and how they work. And then we will understand softmax regression classifier. Thank you.